This is a HeadGum Podcast. Monday, May 30th. We may be in New Zealand. Coming at you live from Queenstown. Uh, not really live. Right. Well, it's live to me right now while re- we're recording. Uh, but that doesn't mean we can't still thank Nature Box for sponsoring this episode. All the way from the other side of the earth. We love that Nature Box has a healthy to indulgent range of options. I agree, actually. You're a little surprised I made. I read the copy, huh? <laughs> yeah, I'm not Freaking used out a little to that. Bit. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, well, the best way to eat better is to be prepared, and they have over 100 options for any occasion that fits seamlessly into your life. Are you trying to avoid temptation? Yes. Well, we've got a snack for that. Are you trying to stay healthy but want to try new things? Yes. We've got a snack for that, too. Do you want to indulge but not feel a little gross later? Yes. They've got a snack for that. You guys, it's like the old slogan, there's an app for that, but different, because there's a snack for that. Yeah, if any of these delicious snacks sound good to you, we're talking about uh, uh, mini Belgian waffles, we're talking about whole wheat chocolate animal cookies. Oh my god, that's delicious. We're talking about sourdough cheddar pretzels, aged cheddar lentil loops, they've got hundreds of snacks, uh, all of them from varying degrees of sweet and salty, all of them delivered right to your door. How does that sound? Sounds good to me, man. Uh, and the best way to check them out is if you go to uh, naturebox.com slash if I were you right now, you'll get 50% off your first box of delicious and unique snacks without any of that junk. That's naturebox.com slash if I were you for 50% off your first box of the best tasting snacks in the world. And trust us, because we're in the southern hemisphere now. Yeah, so we've had the snacks down under. Yeah, we know about what's global and glocal and cool and here and there, and, and it's delicious everywhere. So thanks to Nature Box for sponsoring this episode. Uh, let's get right into it. Uh, things got real. Don't worry. We recorded this one in a studio. It's just the ad that we recorded on my phone. True fact. Uh, all right, let's get into it. Peace. Yet yet another rap intro to the podcast by Nia and the texting pro with crappy jokes and messy quotes from dated songs. I give it up for Vans and the Crap King, yo. The host are these two cruel Jews. They started up on College Humor on YouTube, dude. Sees the cheese and you do you. If I had to pick one, I would know whom to choose. If I were you, then I would shoot an email to them to tell you what you're obliged to do. Even though it might seem cruel, they connect us all like a motherfucking hyphen, dude. Of course, I'm talking about Jake and Nia. If you're having a problem, then they're taking you in. You may think it's real. When they give you advice, they just make fun of you. So grab a tissue and cry. They're gonna pull you so far down into the podcast realm. If I were you, the show starts now. British street rap. Am I correct? <laughs> <laughs> and if not, please tell me that I am, because I don't know if I can handle being wrong right now. Not again. Uh, this guy's actually name is Luca, and he's from Luxembourg. German. <laughs> I believe Luxembourg is its own country. What? Yeah. The, the, <laughs> that was such a genuine... <laughs> wait, wait, what? Really? Slow your roll. Where is that country located? Uh, it's in between two other countries uh in europe it's like a small little uh island nation should i look it up not an island i should say it's like it's squeezed in between i i i'm so baffled so luxembourg bordered by belgium france and germany hmm yeah pass what i don't buy it uh see it's it's really small compar- comparatively. You see, France is all this, Belgium is all this, Germany is all this, and then Luxembourg is this little country squeezed in the middle. And only this guy lives there. Yeah, his name is Lux. <laughs> Lux and Borg. His uh, dad's name is Borg. Uh, but no, his name is Luca. Uh, so thanks, Luca, for uh, sending that theme song. Let's see, his name is Luca Tonar. You may need to specify with the weird spelling. And I'd like to have a shout-out to my homeboy, Manu. I love what you're doing, and I can't wait for future projects. Do you think he means us or that he's or talking to That's all the shout-out to Manu. Yeah, <laughs> that's still Manu. What a weird way to reach Manu. That was a cool, cool Euro rap song. Yeah. Uh, and imagine, what if he was from, like, a real country? <laughs> That'd be so cool. Yeah. Like Belgium? Oh, my God. Can you even imagine if he was in German? would be such a huge upgrade from Luxembourgian. Yeah. <laughs> if he was French. Luxembourgeois. 
I wonder if you're from Luxembourg, you probably get this all the time, which is like, wait, what is that country? Why is it a country? You yeah. Mean, why isn't it just France? Why are you Germany? even here? Yeah. Like at this party? Yeah. Like, why is it good for you to be here for this? Uh, but we apologize. And if you think about it, we're kind of, we're highlighting the Luxembourg ignorance and then illuminating, letting people know, because yeah. I bet it's not just us that doesn't know about Luxembourg. If you think we're trash talking Luxembourg right now, then you better give yourself a reality check. Cause all we did was just talk about your shitty country for like 10 <laughs> fucking minutes. <laughs> so like you didn't hear me say shit about Kuwait or Canada or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Like, all those countries with a K. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We we're talking about your fucking congratulations is what you should. You should hijacked the podcast Luxembourg. Yeah. Exactly what you fucking wanted. <laughs> and that's, that's it. The opening theme song was by Luca. This is fucking crazy. We spent the whole... Do we spend an hour talking about Luxembourg? No, as of right now, four minutes. All right. Well, let's move on. Uh, I wonder if maybe that's where we should go, because we're talking about where we should go after Ireland and London. Yeah. Uh, since we're doing shows in Ireland and London. That's a fun... Let's let the audience in on our little internal debate. Yeah. We always... Uh, we oft... I guess both times we've been um, to Europe for shows, we've extended our trip to travel a wee bit. Yeah, to um, to learn a bit about uh, non Luxembourg countries, but let's say like uh, 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 an Iceland or a, or a Berlin, a Germany. Yeah. So this year, uh, we're talking about a few places, uh, and I, for instance, I want to go to Croatia, uh huh, or Lisbon, Portugal. Yes. Yeah. And Amir wants to go back home immediately. <laughs> I want to go I want to go to Van Nuys. <laughs> I want to come home to Torrance <laughs> and see my mummy. Uh or uh no, I, I wanted to go to Amsterdam or perhaps Barcelona. Yes. Those are my one and two. Right. Amsterdam because I, I feel like it'll be a fun place to experience for a week. Uh and then we don't ever necessarily have to come back. I hear you can do it all. It's not that huge of a place. And I've heard you can do it all in two days. So. <laughs> Toad out to you, Amsterdam. <laughs> He's a regular Luxembourg, if you ask me. Luxembourg you can do in 24 minutes. Yeah. Don't be a Luxembourg, all right? Go to Amsterdam. But if anybody out there has had some favorite places they've been, let us know. Uh, how would they let us know? I guess via Twitter, e Twitter, or if I were you, you know, if they, f I feel like not a lot of people are actually going to respond to it. So. I bet they will. They'll they'll recommend the country that they've uh, they live at. Oh yeah, that's true. So how about you can't say your own country? Mm -hmm. Well, unless you live in Croatia and you're like, oh, I have a dope ass yacht that you can come party on. Uh, tweet at us, Jake yeah. Demir, Jake Hurwitz. We're all ears, uh, but we really have to decide soon. This is getting ridiculous, right? Uh, what the fuck is this? This is this is actually our first podcast. Uh, well, this is If I Were You, the only advice podcast on the internet hosted by us. I'm Amir. <laughs> nice, dude. Thanks, dude. This is our first <laughs> podcast uh, in our new studio. This is that was the inaugural ha. In the yeah, the first ha in our new studio. Damn, that's cool. We have a new HGHQ. Uh, we've taken po uh, photos, put it on our Snapchat, you put it on your Instagram. Damn true. Whether you've seen it or not, we're, we have an office and a studio right now in downtown LA. How many places would you say we've recorded this show in? Oh, man. Just to get houses. Here. To get here. We got Williamsburg in Brooklyn, my house, my apartment. Mm -hmm. We got your apartment in Williamsburg. The one in the that's, basement? Yeah, that's two. Rec room? Uh, rec room and Shout to rec room. Yeah. We did um, at least one podcast in a hotel room in New York. Yeah, that's and four. And we did another one at the College Humor office right. in New York. Right, that's five. Uh, we also did one at the basement at the Shrubberbs, the Bushwick place you were doing. Oh, yeah. Wait, so did we... I don't know if we ever did one in my Williamsburg loft, did we? Oh, yeah, yeah we, we did. did the it was echoey. One, that echoey one that All I right. hated. Um, okay. Six. Uh, then we, we went to LA. We did one at my parents' house. I'm sure more than one at my parents' house when we were living there. Yep. That's seven. We also did one... Didn't we do one on the road in the RV? Or uh, oh, in a hotel on the way across Oh, yeah, across like country. Nashville or something or in Austin. We've that's, done several in hotels. That's eight. I don't even want to count live shows. Right, of uh, course. Then we did our, our house in Silver Lake. 
that's nine. Mm-hmm. Uh, our house in Santa Monica, that's ten. That's the that was the John Wolf episode. I remember yes. doing one over there. Uh, was... We also did the one, the other one in Silver Lake. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I wonder 11. if this is exciting for anybody because <laughs> uh, we lived in Silver Lake in four different houses. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, and the, the carpeted house. Remember when Rose came on? Yeah. She complained about how carpeted that house was. The carpet in the bathroom. Yeah, there was carpet in the bathroom and on the toilet, and yeah. the toilet seat cover was also carpet. And inside the toilet, it was a carpet. carpet yeah, and every time I took a shit, and every time I closed my eyes, my eyelids were carpet. <laughs> uh, Every time I close my eyes. And then... That's 12. I mean, where else did we even... Where else did we And live? then our, our latest place in Los Feliz uh, that we're moving out of is 13, and this is like 14. And I'm sure we've forgotten at least 10. I guess just like in terms of places that the podcast has been based, yeah. uh, it's pretty fun to see it go from the towel fort in your... Uh, one bedroom to this like yeah. cool downtown office. Well, it's been three years for Christ's sake. It's about time. We started it when I was just turning, I think, wasn't I 20? No, I was, thir- I just turned 30. You were 27. God. And how much we've changed. My opinion on everything is completely topsy turvy. Yeah. It's true. Uh, I was engaged. I was married for a bit. Uh, I, <laughs> you are I, still married. Now you yeah, have children. I have children. And then I became a thin divorcee. <laughs> I became a thin little man. <laughs> Uh, describing yourself as thin is so funny. <laughs> I became thinly. Uh, remember when I, I thinned myself? Yes, yes, I was quite thin. <laughs> I, I went through a year or two when I, where I became thin. I thinned me. I curse you thinner. <laughs> I curse you thinner. Not a curse if you ask me. <laughs> I mean, winner, winner, chicken, chicken thinner. thinner. Very <laughs> yes, nice. Yes, dude. <laughs> uh, so why don't we fucking break this shit open? Let's crack a, a crack a bottle of champagne on this studio. It's not completely built. No, uh, we don't have the soundproof foaming up yet. Uh, so it'll sound even better if you can imagine that uh, soon enough. But why don't we uh, crack open this uh, first episode in our new studio uh, uh, why don't we give these names? How about streets that we used to live on in LA? Mm-hmm. Now that we don't live on them anymore, we can we can out ourselves. We need a guy's name. Uh, Michael Terena. Nice. Michael Terena. Uh, Michael Terena writes. Allow me to jump right in. I went home recently and hooked up with this girl I'd been flirting with for a while. <laughs> we didn't waste much time chatting and quickly went back to her place to climb into bed. The sex was great, except one exception. Sorry, with one exception. She was into choking. Several times uh-huh. while we were <laughs> several times while we were go- while we were going at it, she would extend her arms and wrap her hands tightly around my throat, cutting off circulation to my head. <laughs> I was <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of shocked and then would cl- quickly switch position into one where she would be forced to lose her grip without me saying anything. Uh, I'm going home again soon and this girl really wants to hook up again. And I would totally be down ex- except for the whole, you know, not being able to breathe while fucking her thing. What should I do? Love, Michael Terena. Ooh. It's a fun question. Yeah. Uh... The choking thing, I've never, I've never experienced the other way around. Usually, it's like, "Ooh, will you like do that to me?" I've never heard like, "Oh, I'm into choking, so I'm gonna strangle you." <laughs> yeah, I think that's kind of the weird thing about choking, because like, yeah, she doesn't like to be choked. She just likes to strangle. Like, why can't she just give you an Indian burn? But like, I mean, even when you do like choking somebody, I, it's weird because like, I feel like if I was, I'm like a little into choking sometimes, but like if I was really into choking. I don't think I could just um, leap in because it's kind of a dangerous seeming thing. Like yeah, especially for your, the first time you're hooking up with someone. It's how you kill people. Yeah, it's how you how you made people dead in the 1300s. And I know, like when I've done it in the past. I also I hate talking about sex while it's happening oh really really hate having conversations about like what's gonna happen what about any like little dirty things like oh yeah just like that oh baby that's good i love when people say that stuff to me but but i don't ever say anything i mean i sometimes say the words that you were saying sound like stuff that i would say maybe without that cadence right oh yeah baby yeah i say it like i'm i'm learning english from a (laughs) flashcard. Uh, but I, yeah, I'm like kind of quiet and I really hate like discussing like logistics. Oh, like so to say, like if we're hooking up, like, Hey, I like to choke a little bit. I'll be like gentle and I'll go with, you know, whatever. 
I don't like to do that. So I like what I would do is sort of creep my hand like near someone's collarbone. And I, I feel like that's sort of like now they understand what I'm thinking about. Yeah. And if they like it, then they like put my hand on their throat. Oh. And if they don't, then nothing happens. Of course. And that's fine. Yes. Uh, I guess with this girl, she probably feels like it, maybe it's a little less threatening to sort of just start choking a guy. <laughs> yeah. Does she, is she doing that because she wants to be choked or she just... That's yeah. one theory. I think that is one theory. Hmm. Because I know in the past, sometimes um, like a girl will bite or pinch or like choke because they like to be like restrained and fought off. I thought they pinched you because that's your nickname. The pinch? Yeah. <laughs> but I guess it really goes back to that. Like everybody is different. I'm uh, different. Yeah. I'm, indifferent. It's, I'm, I'm a little bit. You're scared right now. Confu- well, I'm just like, I don't know how to say to somebody, I don't want you to choke me. <laughs> I like the idea of him switching positions and then well, she yeah. constantly just finds a new way to choke. <laughs> but I guess doggy style is just what yeah. you have to do. Because she turns like, her she's entire fl- torso. <laughs> she's flailing. Ah, ah. <laughs> Reaching over her head. <laughs> I think what you can do if and like keep it kind of sexy is like if she's choking you, you can like grab her arms and her wrists and sort of like pull them off you a little bit. Oh, just to like clear your breathing pattern. Yeah. Or what if you, what if you, I bet if you say something non-sexy, like, hold on one second, give me a second to like catch my breath. Like she'll be like, start to feel bad. Like, Oh wait, hold on. I just need to, sorry. I just need to breathe for a fucking second. All right. I'm catching my breath now. Cause you were choking me. All right, get back to what you wanted to do. You think she'd go straight back? All right, perfect. I think, yeah, I guess it's sort of probably what I would do in this situation is like suffer through it a little bit, but like at some point or another, like full on, like remove her hands from my neck. Yeah. uh, And maybe like hope that that results in the postquital conversation of like, (laughs) was I choking you too much? And then I would feel a little more comfortable to say like, I uh, yeah, you know, it it was a little too intense. Yeah. I don't <laughs> like getting choked that much. Yeah, cuz when I can't breathe, it's like I I feel faint of me and I can't do it very well. Well, that's I but that's all like that's just his opinion cuz some people really some people thrive under the choking, you know. But I've never heard of like I get off to choking others. Usually it's like I like to feel that sensation. Isn't that the whole autoerotic asphyxiation? What is the deal with choking? Like, why is it good to not breathe for a little? I'm not even. I'm not entirely sure. But you've only. You've also only ever been like the dominant sexual partner with people who say choke me. Right. You never like. Do you think that it's guys that choke and girls that get choked? Oh, that's a good question. Like when it's girl on girl or guy on guy, is it usually the bigger guy or the bigger girl that chokes? I don't know because I don't think that I've. I don't really think i've ever been in the position where somebody had their hands like around my neck choke i've definitely been like yeah, when, scratched bitten slapped it's all called all homer that. simpsoning you he, they say why you little uh, why yeah, you li- yeah. <laughs> i bet that wouldn't fly today where they're like and then the father will choke his son <laughs> well Maybe that's not, pretty no. severe they're like way worse shit on shows though where people like rick and morty Oh, but I'm talking about like network TV. The the dad was choking his son. Family Guy though. Family Guy's pretty bad. Do you think he would choke Stewie? Uh, Stewie used to try to murder his mother. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But that's more Freudian than anything else. A reverse Freud, where a guy a baby is trying to kill his mother and marry his father. Fair. Uh, so what should he do? I say he hooks up with her again. She might choke you less this time, but if it remains to be a problem, I think you can. You can still have sex with her and avoid being choked. And then if she if she chokes twice, shame on you. Shame on you. <laughs> and you can, and we'll figure something out. I like the moving the position that he does. I like the uh moving her hands for a second to like stop the stop the mood. And hopefully she gets the hint that yeah. way. One other thing he could do is just die in bed. What? If he's just dead, like if she chokes him and he dies. Oh, what if he pretends to pass out? That'd be really like, yeah, you like that? And he's like uh, <laughs> You killed. Me. You killed me. Yeah, like choking on your own puke. 
Um, also, you should try coming while you're being choked. Maybe it'll feel amazing. What is that thing? Why is why is choking and coming like what? What is the correlation between those two? Even like if if those people that like autoerotic asphyxiation, do they also like take big bites and don't chew very well because they like getting off to like the danger? <laughs> that of makes choking. them if they yeah if they eat a really big bite of a cheeseburger, it yeah. makes them come just yeah. a little bit. <laughs> Whoa, for a second. Oh, yeah. We should probably have like an autoerotic asphyxiation person. Asphyxiator? Um, do you have you do you have any like choking memories? Like as a kid? Did you ever choke oh, and almost die? Um No, I never choked, but I watched like my little brother choke and I just remember my dad like leaping up and Yeah. You know. It seems like it happens like once a year where like a kid like chokes and like yeah. every the adults all like I can just feel hear the noise of like silverware hitting the table and chairs right. scratching against the smack floor. your kid on the back <laughs> until he it's so weird. He's okay. He's okay. He's okay. He's okay. If I went, if like, if I was in a uh, cafeteria and there was like a kid that started joking <laughs> and I leapt up and smacked his back till he spit it out, I would tell everyone be like, hi, I'm a hero. I saved a life earlier. <laughs> and my dad and mom probably saved us like a jillion times. Yeah. I heard you're not, you're, you're somebody to, oh, now, now I don't remember the advice, uh, is to push it down when like kids are choking instead of trying to push it pull it back out really like if someone's choking on something soft remember lonely and horny shout out to lonely and horny still available on vimeo <laughs> complete season one there you go there's a there's a scene where i choke on a, a donut hole yes uh and i had the theory that was like sometimes it's better to shove it down like through the passageway because the passageway is narrow so like that's the thinnest part but if it goes down or up you're like creating an oxygen flow but what if it's a i mean if it's a child you don't necessarily know what they're choking on right that's why what it's if you like emergency, emergency a emergency. screw goes yeah. down into your you kid. push and then you do the tracheotomy oh all right. you'll do a little hole at the adam's apple and then uh a pen you <laughs> suck out the fluid the 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 ink and the blood and then you start breathing for them through their neck through their trachea huh emergency and that'll trach. make them nut and that'll get them off. <laughs> right. The little five-year-old Buster. He's also known as a Buster. Uh, so good luck, dude. This is what I call a good problem to have. A hot bay wants to choke you in the sack. He, oh, did he say she was hot? Uh, a girl I've been flirting with, a, with for a while. So she, at the very least, he's hot to her. Fine. Are you mad? I'll allow it. <laughs> Beauty's in the eye of the beholder. No, some people are ones and some people are nines. I'm a ten. <laughs> some people are ones and some people are nines. But you're Nothing in between. <laughs> so you can only be a not one, a nine, or a ten. I'm kidding, man. Everyone's a ten, <laughs> except for the ugly people. Then they're fucking ones. Yeah, or you're a five. Or there, yeah, there are a couple numbers in between. Of but I don't course. rank people based on number. Just Based on their looks, is there a number? Do you know what I mean? So yeah, you quantify people's level. Of no, you can't do that. Like it's so fucked up. But I'm saying, if you're hot, then you're a, you're a seven through a ten. So that you are doing that? No, <laughs> no way, no way. Do you rank human beings based on what? If you think they're hot or not? If you think they're an eight or a nine or a ten? And if they are, that means they have a slamming body and a good face. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. Are you speaking against it? Or are you into it? Of course it? not. <laughs> or I'm into it. Or whatever. Uh, we got another question from another guy. Okay. Uh, then his name is Lafayette. Lafayette writes, I've been on Tinder for a while, and I matched with this girl who showed very big interest in me from the get-go. After talking to her for a day, I got her Snapchat, and as soon as she sent me a picture, I had a horrible realization she looks exactly like my sister. I don't know what to do. She's smart and she's funny, but I think I've lost all interest in her romantically. Should I tell her? What should I, uh, should I be upfront in saying that she looks like my sister and is automatically disgusting to think of in a romantic way? Should I make up an excuse saying that we were just not compatible? Should I friend zone her and keep her around? Or should I just ghost her and disappear? You guys are dope and I love your podcast. Thanks, love Lafayette. <laughs> should I friend zone her? Should I put her in the friend zone? I'm going to stow her away in the friend zone. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye forever, my love. She's going deep, deep, deep into the friend zone. <laughs> Locking her in a basement. 
Um, interesting. I've had this problem before. Really? Yeah. Which is weird because you look like your sister. Yeah, that makes sense. I actually, I bet people have had, well, I don't know. I would think uh, people have like maybe liked my sister and then been like, uh-oh, they, she looks like her, her brother. Oh, yeah. She, like, I couldn't hook up with your sister because it would be like making out with Jake. Right. I guess that's why you couldn't. But like if you met my sister first and then you met me, it's like, oh, well, I couldn't hook up with Jake. Well, I can't hook up with any girl that has a brother because that makes me a little bit gay. Because like what? there's a fucking dude out there that like <laughs> shares your fucking genetic All code. of a sudden I'm getting plowed by, <laughs> I think, a dude or a girl that basically is a dude. Yeah, because they have the same fucking rents. So like I, I don't know if I'm going down well, on a even girl then if, if you I'm think about a that, dick. Dude, I think – I love where you're headed, but like, I'll take it one step further. Like, what if you have sex with a girl and she has a mom, which is obviously chill. That's tight. But that's then, fine. Like, Cause that's like, a but woman. then she has a father. Okay. So, so you, you know that? that she actually, your girl that you're fucking came from a dick. Do you know what I'm saying? So what? So you're I one step the... removed from like, I mean, I, I, I challenge you to find an, a sexual experience you've ever had that isn't a wee bit gay to you. Okay, let me think. Just scrolling back in my life. Uh, have you ever last night, with a girl? I made out with a dude. I can see <laughs> that's a little bit right. gay. Well, he has, but did he have like a mom and a sister? He had, yeah, he had two sisters. That takes and a mom. it back a couple notches. Okay, but then uh, there was a time, a point in time, actually, right. that I did kiss a woman on the lips. Okay. But come to think of it, uh -huh. there's a chance that her father once kissed those very same lips. Oh. Oh, that is, oh, dude, you just French kissed it. Two guys then, basically. <laughs> yeah. Well, later that night, I did French kiss two guys. <laughs> I forgot the question. <laughs> uh, what do you do when oh. a girl looks like, a uh, girl that you like looks like your sister? Uh, in the past, I've, I think, hooked up with them once and then stopped. Just like you would with your actual sister. <laughs> It's was, not incest if it only happens once, people. Yeah, it's kind of weird that I wouldn't do it at all, but I guess I, yeah. I wanted to, like... But then again, one is your zero. Well, like, you have When someone is unattractive, you'll only hook up with them once. When someone is disgusting to you, you'll only fuck them once. That's true. Yeah, <laughs> like, oh, she was so gross, I think I only want to fuck her once. <laughs> That's very accurate. Yeah, very biased. <laughs> <laughs> Worst case scenario, I fuck her once. All right, okay. That's <laughs> You're a fucking animal, dude. I yeah. love. It. That's funny. <laughs> yes, Hurwitz is <laughs> back, dude. I'm he'll very... fuck anything <laughs> once. Yeah. You heard of the guy who'll try anything once? Yeah. Well, this guy will fuck anything once. I'm very lonely. I don't care if it's a fucking woman, right. a dude, a lobster. I saw I'm this guy fuck fucking a fucking a hero, a lamb yeah. hero, no, and he I'm was my it. hero. I actually, <laughs> he came to Zeke. The reason I do a lot of it is it comes from a place of deep, dark insecurity. And fear. Uh, what's that, dude? <laughs> I, I guess I'm I'm morbidly afraid of being alone, but even uh, more so, I'm uh, terrified of. You're the fucking man, dude. What are you talking about? <laughs> Maybe I'm really afraid of being together. You know, because <laughs> what kind of man am I, and who would dude, accept? You're a fucking. You are the man, dude. You really are the man, dude. Am I was I? the man. I'm I'm pieces of a man. I'm a million tiny oh, little man. pieces, you and I'll never be. I'm, you're the king. I'm a Humpty Dumpty. I'm not a king. I'm a court jester. <laughs> you're my fucking. Oh, if dude, I'm a, if dude. I yeah, off with my head. I'm telling you, man. <laughs> no, man. You're you're kind of like making me sad now that you're looking yeah. sad. The guy you look up to. <laughs> yeah. He, he, yeah. he, the, the golden idol. Yeah, dude, yeah. you really well, are. look a little under that yeah. coat. He is a paper. He's a paper mache. The emperor bad. has new clothes, brother man, and I love him, dude. No, the emperor. <laughs> the emperor's clothes are irrelevant because he's not really an emperor. Emperor. All right, dude. Yeah. Come on. Man. He's a beggar. He's a pauper. <laughs> he doesn't rule anything except for. His own mind, which is in shambles. I love it, dude. You're a fucking poet, dude. <laughs> I fucking love poetry, dude. <laughs> oh, no, uh, hey, dude. Uh, yo, Serge, man. Serge, dude. Let's do a fucking acrostic. <laughs> I'll start with your name, dude. Jake. Just. Uh, accent. <laughs> or whatever. Uh, kicks ass. <laughs> Elephants, dude. <laughs> awesome, Serge. Uh, yeah. yeah, dude. I'll do some like watercolor around this thing. We can get a frame. Man. <laughs> what happened to us? Where are we? Where did we end up? Don't hook up. Don't date with people that you look like your sister. They're not going to stop looking like your sister.
Unfortunately. That's my advice. All right. Let's take a break. We'll be right back with more questions after this. Thank you as well to Headspace for sponsoring this episode. Hey, how'd you like peace of mind? Me? Yeah. How would I like it? Yeah. How about how would I love it? I w- My <laughs> mind is filled with demons. A lot of skeletons in this closet. I am anxious, angry, scared, and not quite coy enough these days. <laughs> That's right. If you suffer from fear, anger, stress, anxiety, depression, sleeplessness, basically anything, all this stuff begins in your mind but they you're basically habit. describing my tinder bio dude. <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry to hear that uh the change can come through guided meditation Me too. i'm uh, sorry too <laughs> the change can come through guided meditation uh and headspace is meditation made simple uh it's a guided meditation app it's so smart so smart and efficient that over five million people use it already they already use headspace for free right now so if you want to download free Headspace app and begin their Take 10 program, that's 10 days of guided meditation, just go to headspace.com slash if I were you. Yo, it's straight up free. Why would you not try to meditate? It's free, and it's also very healthy of, of mind. Uh, it's, it's definitely worth at least checking out. And you trying. do crunches in the gym. Yeah, you work out your muscle, but do you work out your soul? Your you- brain muscle is a big muscle, too, okay? Headspace is crunches for your brain. <laughs> okay. That's fair. Uh, you can train That's your mind. That's the slogan, right? <laughs> it's not. <laughs> it says train your mind for a healthier, less stressed life. Again, start your free trial today at headspace.com slash if I were you. That's headspace.com slash if I were you. How about that, guys? Uh, and if, uh, and uh, let's thank one more sponsor since we're already here. Might as well. Uh, we want to also thank Tra- Tracker for sponsoring this episode. Oh, I've got a good bit. Okay. Oh, where's the copy for this ad? I can't find it. Oh. I've lost. I've lost. <laughs> I've lost my laptop. Oh well, thank God I, I put a, a trackered coin, a, a, a honing device, on your laptop, and we can find it right away. Oh, here it is. Uh, here it is right now. It's the tracker. There tracker you go. makes losing things a thing of the past. Whether it's a smart car, a smart phone, a smart home, technology has made everything smart. So why not revolutionize the way we lose stuff? Yeah, that'll make you smart for buying Tracker, buddy. Uh, you can put this little coin-sized uh, device on your wallet, on your phone, on your computer, uh, and you can find it within minutes. And if you lose your phone, you can press the button on the tracker, and your phone rings. So it's, it's, it works both ways. Yeah, it really does suck to lose stuff. Anybody who's lost a wallet, a phone, or their keys knows exactly what we're talking about. And, and I bet almost all of you guys do know then, exactly what we're talking about. And if it's not you, then it's someone else in your life that always loses their stuff. Oh, you're so annoying. What a great gift this would be. Uh, and if you want a little sweet deal, you don't have to tell the, the gift receiver that you actually got 30% off your entire order. If you go to the tracker, T H E T R A C K E R dot com, that's the tracker dot com, and enter promo code if I were you. The tracker dot com. Use promo code if I were you for 30% off your entire order. Find your stuff faster, easier. You basically never lose anything important ever again. There you go. Does that sound good? We hope so. Thank you, the tracker. Uh, let's get back to the app. Bonjour. Je me peu <laughs> So we decided to go to Paris for a year. Uh, <laughs> and that's where we are now. <laughs> <laughs> if you're hearing this, we are on the Parisian canals. <laughs> are there canals in Paris? That's Venice. Uh, here's an interesting fact. If you're listening to this, the day it comes out, Monday, May 20, or Monday, May 30th? Yeah, Monday, May 30th. Um, we're in fucking New Zealand. What? We are in Queens Town or Queensland? One of those. Queenstown, Queensland. Let me look it up. Queensburg. I'm I'm sick of 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 relying on my ignorance. Uh, we're in New Zealand right now. Yeah, we are recording this on a Tuesday. <laughs> nice, dude. Uh, and we leave tomorrow night, uh, Wednesday, to go to New Zealand. How's that? Uh, we'll be. I guess everybody by the time they're listening to this will probably know via Snapchat or Instagram what's going on. Yeah, we're going to be tweeting up for a storm. We're going to be Facebooking, snapping all over is the place. Uh, it is Queenstown, New Zealand. We're going to be in Auckland. We're going to be in Wellington. We're going to be in Christchurch. We're going to be in Queenstown. We're going to soak in as much uh, New Zealand 
uh, as we possibly can in six days during your lovely lovely frigid winter uh and we, we only visit the southern hemisphere at the wrong time yeah i don't know how we always end up there but thanks to air new zealand for hooking us up with a flight and making it making our adventure come true they they asked us if we'd want to have a nice six day adventure and we said fuck yeah yeah dude uh so thanks to them for hooking us up and if you want to follow along uh, i think snapchat's going to be the main one yeah we'll be snapping it uh, i'm amir bloom a-m-i-r-b-l-o-o-m on snapchat and i am jake da man you guys can remember that because i am da man and <laughs> the da is spelled d-a and i am jake da man 85 because that's the year that i was born 1985 i'm gonna get this pitch down under 10 seconds soon jake demand yeah 85 under 10 seconds so that you can explain what your screen name is on snapchat in a video before it expires yeah that'd be good uh so that's gonna be fun hopefully we get to meet some people over there we we there are some listeners from our show or from our podcast and viewers from our show fans on facebook that live in new zealand it'd be fun to f- somehow find a way to to meet up with one of them yeah that would be nice I'd like to meet a Maori tribesman or woman. Oh. <laughs> I want to be taught one of those cool ass uh the dance. Yeah, the dance and the the dance that they What do is it before. called? Like the raka, the saka, the the haka? Haka? Yeah, yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. I can't wait to learn the name of the dance. <laughs> <laughs> hey everybody, I'd really like to hear your raka saka. You think you'll bungee jump? Um my inclination is no. Right, just because it's scary. Yeah, I think being 30, I just don't give a fuck about <laughs> adrenaline rushes. I, mean, I get kind of a good adrenaline rush when I go to Home Depot and I look at the plants yeah. at this point. You know, so bungee it, jumping, I that makes me feel a little tired. The pros and cons are kind of interesting when it comes to bungee jumping because the pros are, or the cons is death. You either die or maybe get disembodied. Your leg right. falls off or you, you, wrap, you wrap something around the cord and then it, 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 it takes your arm off. And then the pros is feeling like, kind of cool for a little bit you're just like woo yeah so i would say the cons outweigh the pro like it'll change your life or whatever doesn't really apply to me because i feel like i already live most of my life 30 years of it we're good i'm on the tail end of it here oh so like (laughs) so you're saying like there's not a lot of cons like if you die because you're already like 30 30 oh no i'm saying like i don't want to change my out like i don't need my life to change or anything oh yeah i'm just setting my ways i'm this is my old age right 30 is my twilight years you are laying down icing your finger that you injured i'm falling apart right here on a heel that you can't walk on i'm falling apart i'm elevating my heel because my heel hurts and i'm icing my finger because i tore my fucking finger pulley yeah my back kind of hurts i think i slept on it weird this podcast is gonna be what, us talking about our ailments one day and that day is now <laughs> one whole day can you imagine the time where we just talk about our ailments right how's now? your back feeling what's what's going on I, I fear it's a pinched nerve i don't know what's uh oh i'm the pinch nice dude. and i'll get on everybody's nerves <laughs> <laughs> pinch 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 your booty pinch your booty uh, I think our ep- uh, our London tickets are on sale, too. <coughs> are you okay? And I have a cold. Uh, any tickets that we can announce uh, will be done so on Uh That London show is just one show, I believe. Just one show, one night. But it's going to be a big theater. We want to pack the shit out of it. So get your tickets now. Uh, I think the date on that will be August 2nd or 3rd. One of those Basically days. my birthday, so y'all better come. Oh, that'll be a fun little birthday present for you. Yeah. Uh, so we'll see you guys there. And then Dublin, I think they, they haven't even announced the comedy. Fe- it's a comedy festival. I don't know if the, the, it's been announced or what tickets are available. You guys will be in Dublin. Just don't make any plans for July 26th, 27th, 28th, 29th, <laughs> and 30th. <laughs> Is that fine? I don't know uh, which one. I calendar open. Maybe it's 28th, 29th, and 30th. Is it only three days? Yeah, yeah, 28th, 29th, 30th. All right. That's when we're going to be there. Again, information all up on our website. Uh, anything else we should talk, or should we get right into another question? I just want to say I love the fans. What's that? I just want to say I love the fans. I know, and I do too. I was going to say I love the fans as well. I was going to say that I love the fans, and to them I say toda. Toda to the fans, to the day ones. Totally, and I think the fa- I also was going to say, when you were like, when I said, is there anything else we want to say? I want to yeah. be like, I love the fans more than Jake, and I think that no. they're super awesome i think right. they're in, like super awesome and awesome dude and i want to i want to also be like yo i love the fans my day ones 
I think everybody who's been out there season their cheese yeah. um, in the most ha- hashtag dope ways. They are my they are my gullies. Awesome. So I'm serious about that. No, but I was anybody gonna... who understood all those references. That's what makes you and the whether, day one. Yeah, and whether you understood the references or you're not, whether you're listening to the podcast or you're not, whether you're overhearing this on a train because someone's like wearing mm-hmm. headphones and it's really loud and you can sort of hear it, you guys are all, I love all you guys, whether you're fans, whether you're not fans, whether right. you're just like some random guy. So I feel like anyway. you're making a little less special because now you're saying you love everyone, <laughs> even if they are just sitting near someone that's playing the podcast. I'm, saying, I'm saying, I'm thinking, <laughs> so if it's three people on the train and there's one person I got that's listening a lot to our podcast. To give. One person and that's I got asleep, a lot and of love. another person who's just sort of ha- housing a sandwich, but they they're like hearing this a little bit. You say I love you to all three sleeper, of them. A sandwich eater, whether you're talking to me or not talking to me, whether you're listening to this or not, I love, love, love you to the fans, and I do, and I really do. And I was going to say that I love the fans. You did say that. <laughs> I'll be the last and the first to say that I love the fans. All right, well that's enough. <laughs> we take enough of our dear fans' time with this. No, right. That's let's what I was saying. We should the, move on. I know. Let's move on. I was going to say, let's fans. give the fans. No, no, no I I'm love saying. the fans. I was going to say, I love the fans so much that I think we should move on. And I agree. So let's move on. All this right. next question, I love the fans the most, comes from. Let's call this guy the fans because I love him the most and I want to name him after the person that I love the most, and that's the fans. So remember that. Too shy, dude. <laughs> <You can't. laughs> that was the last one that one upped it the most. You went. can't uh, think of an organic way to, <laughs> to insert my love of the fans. The fans writes, Hey guys, so I live in Austin, and we've recently gone through a crazy period in which Uber Lyft uh, tried to essentially buy the rights to not have to do full background checks that are required under Austin law. They spent about $5 million on an advertising campaign, which ultimately would have been less than just doing the damn background checks, and they pulled out of the city when their bill did not pass. Now, we are without ride-sharing. Unfortunately, Austin has shitty public transportation, but I have made it work in the past. I have been super frugal, and I have a free bus pass because I'm a University of Texas student, so I have taken the bus for seven uh, for years to save the $7 it would take to ride downtown in an Uber. My friends have not caught on to how to do this properly and have been asking me for rides downtown. They started off saying, hey, we'll pay you as much as, you're a Lyft, as, much as if you're a Lyft driver to take us downtown, and I was glad to make a quick $20 to drive 20 minutes. Recently, I fell into financial trouble. Don't get addicted to dip, boys and girls. And I have been jumping on more opportunities to take them. Last night, they asked me for a ride, and I said, usual rate, and they got pissed. Granted, they were all fairly drunk at this point, but they insisted that I was not being a bro and begging for chump change. One of my friends gave in and Venmoed me $20. After this, my bank account now has $20 and one cent in it. That's right, I literally had one cent left in my bank account. When I dropped them off, he turned around and casually said, just Venmo me it when you get back on your feet. What the fuck? Am I required to do this? He basically paid me to drive him, then immediately asked for my money back once I fulfilled the service he paid me for. Should I Venmo him right back this second? I wouldn't have taken them if I knew they weren't going to pay me, and I have honestly been giving them free rides for years. I never started the usual rate trend, and I was only assuming that my continued involvement with driving them would merit continued payments. What should I do? Love the fans. Oof. That is Imagine a dystopian future where where Uber and Lyft don't exist in your city. Isn't that weird? What a sad place that would be. We're already we are already there. If Uber just went away, I don't even know what the fuck I would do. Yeah. I'd be like stranded. It's almost like can you imagine if you didn't have your cell phone or the internet? Right. Like people just it's been around for so long that people sort of like have grown not grown up with it completely, but like come into adulthood with it for sure yeah we basically don't know los angeles without uber um i think this guy's friends are kind of pieces of shit like they can't just request rides downtown for free willy-nilly yeah uh so yeah, it's like a, it's like a half favor so they sort of needed him and then he said he would only do it if they paid him and they were like 
go fuck yourself. But then also they needed the ride. But then, so then they did say, fine, we'll pay you. And then they said, we have to have the, you have to give us the money back. This is sort of capitalism in a nutshell. It's this, this guy seeing a hole in the marketplace. There's no more Uber, no more Lyft. He's saying, okay, suddenly there needs to be a new, com- a new competitor, someone that rides below the law for a little bit. I'll, I'll, I'll ship your ass around town for 20 bucks. And it's a take it or leave it situation. You either got it or you don't. The friends paid for it. I don't think you owe them your money back. Of course not. I mean, I guess my bigger advice is to these guys sound like jackasses. Uh, and I would just stop doing it altogether for money and for free because I see it going badly. Really, I see it growing into some sort of a side hustle. Well, like it, you don't go into business with your friends. So, like if he starts saying like this is the usual rate then they're going to start saying like okay well can i get a discount or like can you not charge me this time can it be a favor and then you start to then you start to feel like an asshole when you're saying no to your friends so just just don't do it it's not worth it when i say keep doing it they'll suddenly spread the word they'll be at a bar be like yeah i couldn't fucking uber here but my buddy drove us for 20 bucks and then another group of friends will be like well 20 bucks that's pretty good maybe we'll cut, we'll pay him to drive us back you drive him back you give him your card that spreads the word suddenly you're driving people willy-nilly hither and thither at a dollar a minute you're making 60 bucks an hour you work four hours a night five nights a week you're you're making it you're in the rich you're in the red you're in the black you're in the green and that's the color that matters the most you, you said went you were from in the one red? Penny, you went from one penny to a million and you know what? There's no looking back. And you tell your friend, you wanted the $20? You want the $20 back? Here's $2,000. Here's $20,000. I don't need this shit anymore. Because you don't need that cash anymore. You know why? Because you moved to Luxembourg. Everything what? is super cheap there. We're talking white fish, white fish sandwiches for five cents a pop. You, you're living like a king for $200 a year. Um. And, and the year? The year is actually 1934. So super stagflation. There's wheelbarrows. People are walking around with wheelbarrows full of cash. It's not even worth the paper it's printed on. You're not laughing all the way to the bank. The bank is laughing at you for getting there. Where'd you get a wheelbarrow? You know where you got it? Fucking Austin, Texas. And you can blame it on the fucking Uber slash Lyft, the, the panhandlers, the fat cats on 6th Street in Congress who couldn't get their shit together. Who spent, what did he say, $5 million dollars? on a campaign that would have been easily spent on background checks. I don't know. I feel like you just, you know, you don't owe your friend 20 bucks. What? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, what? (laughs) Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, (laughs) Sorry. So your advice was to to go to, to move to Luxembourg in 1934. (laughs) No, yeah, I was just saying, like, like, that was just another option. You said you didn't have to own A couple of years, I mean, it must, yeah. Um, yeah, We don't have to agree on every little bit of advice. Yeah, I was just going to say, maybe don't offer your services to drive people downtown, like, take it off. Yeah. You're you're off limits now. That's totally valid, But you wanted them to, you know. No, I'm saying that's that's another. You wanted him to become a taxi driver and move across the country. The show is, if I were you. Right. It's like, what would you do if you're, you were you? And that's what I would do. Yeah. And you would do something else. And then it's up to this guy to decide which... I'm not here to say which idea is more right. or less feasible than the other. Well, one is just like you don't drive your friends around for any amount of money, and the other one is uh, relocate right. to a foreign country. And eat no, white fish yeah, what? sandwiches. <laughs> you wanted him to eat white fish sandwiches that were five cents. I don't know what I said specifically, right. but well, that was one thing you said. <laughs> all right, you said two hundred dollars. That's up to you to decide, dude. It's all you I'm could saying. live like a king, and, uh, and also mention that the money wasn't worth anything. <laughs> Yeah. You take it or leave it, baby. Leave it. <laughs> <laughs> Love the fans. So t- <laughs> it's up to him, totally. Uh, we're going to figure out this nitrous oxide leak in the office. <laughs> uh, but we got to get out of here. Uh, this has been a silly episode. But uh, if you have your own questions, your own theme song submissions, that address for everything is if I re show at gmail.com. The opening one was written by our famous favorite Luxembourger. Uh, Luca Tonar and this closer is written by Jack Reynolds Uh, we'll be back next week if we survive our New Zealand trip if we uh, go bungee jumping I don't know who's to say yeah Uh, Toda we'll be back soon bye if I were you 
I would stop being a dick if I were you. I would YouTube that shit if I were you. I would seize the cheese if I were you. That was a headgum podcast.